Welcome to this video on single node pair circuits. That's actually quite a mouthful. Uh, basically all this means is that we're going to talk about circuits in this video that have two nodes, a single pair of nodes. And uh, we will use this to develop some useful formulas about current as it flows through resistors. So let's begin with an example, um, an example circuit. So here we have a current source, and this current source we'll just say is 2 amps, and then we will have three resistors. We'll have a 1 ohm resistor, a 2 ohm resistor, and a 3 ohm resistor. And we'll connect the tops of everything and we'll connect the bottoms of everything. And the thing we want to find out here is what the voltage across all of the resistors are. So if we'll label this as plus and minus V, we want to find out what this voltage is. Okay, so the strategy that we'll use is we will first identify the nodes in this circuit and uh, we will verify that indeed there are two so that we have a single pair of nodes. And then uh, we will uh, find the current through each of the resistors in terms of the unknown voltage across the two nodes V and then we'll apply Kirchhoff's current law and then solve for V. So first off, uh, those of you that have watched previous videos with circuits that looked like this will probably already understand what I'm doing here but just to make sure uh, again, my experience has been that this is one of those concepts that people struggle with quite a bit. So the top node in the circuit is everything that I'm coloring in in green. And again, the idea is because everything inside the green is connected by wires, the voltage at any point or the voltage drop between any two points inside the green, say from here to here, is zero. Okay, and similarly, we'll identify the other node in the circuit by outlining it in red. And again, anything, the diff, or the, yeah, the, the voltage drop between any two points in the red node is zero. So what this means is that if I want to look at the voltage across the 1 ohm resistor, it's the same as the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor or the 3 ohm resistor, and I've labeled this V. Okay, so again, because I have only two nodes, I can only have one voltage between these two nodes, and that voltage between these two nodes will label V, and that's the voltage across all the resistors. Okay, so now our strategy, in fact, we'll get rid of this because it's going to get in the way in just a second. Our strategy is to define currents that are flowing through each of the resistors and then solve for these currents in terms of V. So the first current I'll identify that flows through the 1 ohm resistor is I1. I'll identify the second current that flows through the 2 ohm resistor as I2. And uh, let's see, what's a color we haven't used for a while? We'll identify the current that flows through the 3 ohm resistor as I3. Now, we know from Ohm's law that I1 will be equal to the voltage across the resistor, which is V, we don't know what it is yet, divided by the resistance, which is 1 ohm. Similarly, I2 will be V divided by 2 ohms. And I3 will be V divided by 3 ohms. Okay, so we've solved for these three currents in terms of our unknown voltage V and the resistances. Now we need to apply Kirchhoff's current law to the top node. And the version of Kirchhoff's current law that I will use for this example is that 
the sum of the currents flowing into the node is equal to the sum of the currents flowing out of the node. So flowing into the node, we have two amps from the source. That's this guy right here. And then flowing out of the node, we have I1, I2, and I3. So now all we need to do is plug in our expressions for I1, I2, and I3. We have V over 1 ohm. V over 2 ohms and V over 3 ohms. Okay, so those are I1, I2, and I3. Now the next thing we'll do is we will factor a V out of this uh, expression on this side. We have a V here, here, and here, so we can factor that V out. Now my experience has been that sometimes people get confused when they're doing the um, the factoring in the algebra. Uh, you need to do this carefully and uh, when you do this you'll have a V out here times 1 over 1 ohm plus 1 over 2 ohms plus 1 over 3 ohms. Okay, so again, what I've done is I've factored a V out of this expression. And again, you have to be careful when you're doing this because uh, uh, my experience has been that you tend, uh, people quite often make mistakes in the algebra here. So now I can solve for my unknown voltage V. This is V is equal to 2 amps. Well, in fact, actually, before I do that, let's uh, let's tidy up some space here because we're going to need it. We'll assume that you remember what these guys are, and if you don't, you can always go back and look. Okay, so let's solve for V. We have V is 2 amps, that's this side of the equation, divided by... 1 over 1 ohm plus 1 over 2 ohms plus 1 over 3 ohms. Okay, so I've taken this expression in the parentheses and just put it in the denominator here. So I actually am at the point now where I can just compute this and uh, I'll do it in two steps. We'll do 2 amps over uh, let's see, we have 1 over 1 ohm plus 1 over 2 ohms, so that's 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third, which should be um, 1.833, and this is actually 1 over ohms, which is kind of a weird unit. Um, and when we work this out then, we get that the voltage whoops, is going to be 1 over 1.833, which um, my calculator is, which right now is uh, Google, I'm not doing this right, okay, here we go, which is uh, 5, Point, whoops, yeah, point five four volts. Okay, so that's the result that we get. Again, the way that we um, came up with this was to define the unknown voltage V, find the currents through the resistors, and then use Kirchhoff's current law. Now you'll notice that. Uh, this term here, where I have a 1 over 1 ohms, 1 over 2 ohms, and 1 over 3 ohms, basically every resistor that is in my circuit gives a 1 over that resistance term in the sum, and the sum ends up down here. So in order to do this without actually doing the circuit analysis, you could see that it's just the current 
divided by the sum of the reciprocal of the resistances. Okay. Uh, sometimes you'll see circuits with two current sources. In that case, rather than just having the single current source here, it would be the algebraic sum of the two current sources, or three or four or whatever. So um, this circuit turns out to be useful when we want to find um, the equivalent resistance of parallel resistors. It turns out to be useful uh, when we want to find what's called the current divider formula which will happen in the next video. So thanks for watching.